just would like to share something that uh, I was overlooking for quite a while and I was struggling to find a solution for, and it was right there in front of me. So it might be uh, avoiding some of you who are working in this space. So with Affinity, when you draw objects, and I'm going to just draw uh, maybe three different objects and just do a, a line there. Okay, when you're drawing objects, they're all context sensitive. So when you select the object, um, you find the dialog pops on top here and it gives you things relevant to this object. Uh, if you see on the straight line, I'm selecting these objects, uh, selections here. If I select on the square, you see a few more objects coming on here because uh, the program determines that because this is a, a, a few strokes that are joined together, it has intersection angles and therefore it gives you the ability to set up some sort of corners, etc. Um, like in this case, you could come here and put rounded corners um, and that sort of thing. And also the actual lines itself. If you click on this dialog here, you can get all the different settings that would apply to it over here. Okay, but I'm not going to go into that specifically. If you hit onto a circle, uh, you can see there's different dialogs that come on here. So everything is context sensitive. The the area that I just want to cover is, um, or basically two two things, is when you have an object and you want to size it, make it much smaller than usual, um, often what happens is by default, if I take this object and I size it now proportionally smaller, if I zoom in there, can you see what happens? The actual line thickness stays the same, so the smaller object now appears as having thick lines. I'm going to control Z with that. Um, often if you're creating a logo, you want the l everything to proportionately size. So let me just show you if I put in, say, the letter A here. Okay, let's make it capital A. So I've got a letter A in here. Say this was my logo. Okay, I select all of this and now to make the logo much smaller. So I press Control, Shift and Alt to constrain it as I size it down. When I do that and I zoom in, can you see what happens? I'm going to press Control Z. Uh, how do you overcome that? Basically is by setting the properties of the actual stroke. Uh, like I said, each of these strokes have unique properties to them. It's not that uh, every stroke gets the same properties of the one next to them. So when you select this now, you have these options that come up here. And when you click here where the point size, the thickness of it is, you have quite a few different settings here, which I'm not going to go through. The one that I want to highlight is the scale with object. So if you click scale with object, and now if I go out here and I do exactly the same, I'm going to just zoom in, control, alt, and shift. And when I size it to a small object, if I zoom in there now, can you see it's beautiful? That's exactly what I want. Okay, so that's how you make sure that your strokes are proportionate when you resize them. If I make it, if I make this thing much bigger, the thickness of those lines will increase also proportionately. Okay. Um, the other thing just to note is that if you do that one setting with a stroke, the next object that you draw will take on that properties. Okay, so the property of scale to object will be in the next object you draw. So if you draw another circle over here and then we go and look here you'll see scale with object if i switch this off now and i draw another circle here okay and i go look at the properties you'll see it will be off there so if i resize this now it will also get quite thick if i make it very small okay so if you want to work with everything that's going to be scaled with the object then you basically select the first one, change that feature, then every object afterwards will be able to scale to, to um, the object. Okay, um, the second and last thing that I just want to highlight is something that I had a challenge with also is like if you have a design like this, for example, these lines and they're coming across, mm, let's just put all these here um, and remove that. Select that and lose that over here. Um, if this was like parts of an object and I wanted to make this one a bit sort of uh, thicker, um, I could do that. But if I wanted to add the same thickness to say all of these objects, then I'll click here and you'll see there's your stroke thickness. When I click the next one, stroke disappears. 
And I used to think, where is the stroke feature now? How do I access it? And it's as simple as grouping them together because affinity works on the basis that if you group different stroke areas together, it understands that you want to apply the, the, the effect to them together. Because at this point in time, it, it doesn't know if you if you're just selecting that for the purpose of joining them with other features or you want to group them together to create modifications. So in this case, if we chose this one, this one, and this one to actually do change the stroke thickness on them, we'd have to select group first. And now once they group, you see the stroke feature come up there. And there we go. So we'll be able to do that and add any of these features here now applied in that group. So the scaling, everything is done in that group. Okay, so that was something that I I overlooked. I used to think, how do I get these things? Now, if I wanted all of these to be, I'd go in there, I'd group them together. Again, we would do exactly the same. So it's the group feature that makes the stroke area appear again, and then you're able to add those features to it. And of course, yeah, I could add, um, scale features anything that happens here if i went in uh, let me just move this out of the way um, if i went in here and i use this pressure it will apply it to all of the lines together you can see all of them applying together if i did a little nudge there you can see it, it affects each of these objects using the the lines as we go along okay so the key point i'm trying to highlight here is the group feature when you group them together that's when the stroke feature reappears again Okay, so hopefully that's been helpful to those of you who have uh, had a bit of a challenge in finding the stroke feature once you want to apply it to more than one object.